very good morning, uh, or indeed good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from uh, in the world today. And a very big thank you uh, for joining our session, which is all about time management uh, this morning. My name is Brad and I work at uh, Murdoch University Dubai and this morning we're very lucky to be joined by uh, our expert, our academic colleague, uh, Rebecca Kio, who will be commencing the, the presentation uh, very shortly. And I appreciate for many of you, um, you know, this is a very concerning and very unsettling time right now. And if like uh, myself and Rebecca, you, you're finding yourself uh, locked away in isolation at home. It can be, it can be very, you know, unusual uh, uh, times that we are living in. Um, but hopefully, this is a great opportunity for you now. Whilst you are at home, to uh, develop yourselves, continue your educational journey, and that's exactly what we want to uh, be able to provide for you as a student uh, today. So hopefully, you will find the the session that, that's about to begin. Uh, very useful and beneficial and please we want this to be an interactive session it's an opportunity for you uh, as I said to to develop your skill set so please ask us any questions uh, throughout that you might have and we'll be very happy to to answer those um, if for any reason you're having any technical difficulty uh, you do have a chat function uh, on the webinar software that we're using so please do just write a message in that and I'll be very happy to address that as we work through the presentation. I know that Rebecca's got some great activities uh, planned as well during the session for everyone. So again, please do interact with us, do engage, and, and you can use the same chat function at the required uh, uh, opportunities in order to do that. But I think uh, without any kind of further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Rebecca now, who's uh, going to give us uh, an outline of, of the fantastic content we're about to, uh, to experience. So over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Bradley, and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this uh, webinar um, on time management in this new challenging world. Uh, these are the areas we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to look at five key steps to managing time and uh, also some apps to boost your productivity. Um, and along the way, we'll share some uh, research and theory that's relevant uh, to time management. But before we go any further, I'd just like to, I'd just like to get a feel for um, how you've all been spending time in lockdown. Um, and apologies if some of you are on our frontline workers and have been going out. I don't have a picture that could express your particular environment at the moment. But um, please look at these pictures and choose one <laughs> that you relate with. Um, that you most relate to at the moment. And could you just pop it in the chat, please? Just choose letter A. I think letter A is a, these are all from the Gulf News, by the way. What's, what people, what Dubai residents have been doing during lockdown. The first one, picture A, is a, is a gentleman running a marathon on his balcony. So if, you, if that resonates with you, choose A. Uh, B is um, a young girl just making the best of her space. <laughs> I think having, setting up a little beach party on a balcony. Um, C is a big family. Some of you may have siblings and have been doing extra babysitting and helping with schoolwork. Um, so if you feel that that's how you've been spending your time, please uh, choose C. Um, D, we're all, a lot of us are working from home and juggling childcare, um, or you might be an older um, child in your house and trying to balance your schoolwork with siblings. That's picture D. E is a funny one from New Zealand, actually, just to highlight the, um, <laughs> oh great, we're getting, some, we're getting some great responses here. Just to highlight uh, some of the Zoom meetings we've all been having and things that can go wrong. And uh, F is just clowning around, having fun, making the most out of every little task. And G, Netflix. <laughs> uh, some of you have chosen more than one, that's fine. Yeah, a big mix. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> I feel like I go from, um, from a teacher uh, to childcare worker to um, short order chef in the space of a half an hour, usually. <laughs> Rewa, you're binging on Netflix? Yes, I can relate to that. We have movie night every week in our house. All right, lovely, thank you for that. So part of the challenge during this um, 
pandemic is the, the newfound lack of structure um, to our days and weeks. And um, obviously this will vary across industries and roles, but many of us will find that um, our usual targets um, and priorities have been postponed indefinitely. <laughs> um, and that creates a feeling that we're drifting along and waiting for things to return to normal. And that can be really disorientating. So I wanna start this session um, just with a short video. And it's the old analogy of, of pebbles and rocks and filling up your time. Um, please watch it. Um, and as you watch it, just make a little note of what the, the big rocks, the key rocks are in your life. And reflect a little bit on your education goal, um, if you have one. All right, so bring that up now. Have you ever thought there just aren't enough hours in a day? With every passing season, semester, or stage of life, it can feel like you're being asked to fit more and more into an already packed schedule. All of us have faced the tension of having too much to do and not enough time to get it done. But what if I told you the issue isn't the amount of anything, but the arrangement of everything? This jar represents an allotment of time, maybe a day, a month, a year, or your entire lifetime. These pebbles signify the little things that we spend a lot of time on. Things that are fun, but mostly frivolous in the grand scheme of things. Things that are enjoyable, but not essential. Things like Facebook or Netflix, going window shopping or spending an extra hour or fishing on the boat. It signifies hobbies, entertainment, or school clubs. If we're honest, we spend a lot of time on things like these. Things that aren't critical to our success. Things that, if we stopped doing them, it wouldn't be the end of the world. These rocks, on the other hand, represent the things in life that are pivotal. The things that truly shape and reshape our lives. Things like our physical health and the time we devote to maintaining it. One rock can be our children, another can be our spouse or anyone who is indispensable in your life. One rock can signify your career, while another can signify the education you need to get a career. Another rock can stand for your faith or religion. And I'll let this rock signify something specific to you that I might have missed. And this, this is where most of us find ourselves, struggling to fit things into our schedule. If only I had more time, i.e. a bigger vase, we say. But the issue isn't our allotment of time. The issue is how you prioritize the things within your time frame. Because when you prioritize your family correctly, when you place faith in its rightful place, when you prioritize school instead of procrastinating, when you keep up with your health, when you put the important things first, or at the beginning of your to-do list, or at the front end of your schedule, you end up with the space necessary for everything else and then some. We focus on the amount of things we have to get done, when our attention should be on the arrangement of those things. If you really want to make the most of your time, devote your time to the things that matter most first, and everything else second. Okay, so um, I hope that video helped you to um, maybe reconnect with your core priorities, um, as um, that'll help in our first step towards time management, which is uh, goal setting. So step one is to set your goals, and we need this constant reminder um, in our in our life in order to to keep going with something that seems like a that is a long term project, which is your education. So could I just get um, a response in the chat from everybody? Um, is anyone planning on doing study this year, or are you currently studying? So Sonia, 
yep, you've got uni this year, Rewa, you're currently studying. Yep. Jiwon, you're at high school. You must uh, have been doing a lot of um, webinars and Zoom meetings and team chats recently. Carlton, you're studying. Sarah, one more year at school and Joe, Great, A-levels, well done. Wow, Aziz, you've just finished your MBA, congratulations. Okay, Yara, you're a senior in high school, starts college. Uh, college. Excellent. Excellent. So we're, we all know what the student load is, is like at the moment. And uh, based on your uh, comments from the first picture, we're all, you're all balancing quite a lot of other commitments as well. So this, this slide, this goal is for you to really um, think about your intrinsic motivation for the study plan that you have. Um, what is your vision of your future self? Uh, is your vision to become uh, a world-renowned cybersecurity expert responsible for protecting the data of billions of people? Um, is your vision to be a respected and compassionate psychologist uh, looking after vulnerable children? Okay, where is your study leading? Okay, um, do you have do you have someone that you follow on LinkedIn or? Twitter that you aspire to, get a picture of them. Write down your vision um, of your future self. And then give yourself some reminders about, that's a big reminder for why you're studying. And then you can break it down into two or three or even five other reminders. What I'm showing you on the screen at the moment is just a little desktop saver. <laughs> okay, so you can put that on your phone or your computer. So whenever you go to sit down to do study, that'll help you refocus again. Um, now, when you set goals, you need to have a mixture of long-term and short-term goals. The long-term is getting up to the top of the mountain, isn't it? Um, and the way you get there is through short-term goals. So, um, but in order for them to be effective, okay, so just say, yeah, in order for them to be effective, though, you have to make them into SMART goals. Now, are you all familiar with the acronym SMART when we talk about a goal? If anyone knows what it stands for, please put it in the chat. No, everyone's quite quiet. So the S is for specific. And good. And M is for measurable. Thanks, Nisha. A is for achievable. Thanks, Nisha. Ah. Yeah, relevant. I am. Um, Achievable and realistic sort of seem the same to me. So I always choose R for relevant, like doesn't actually tie into my long-term goal, my vision of my future self. And the last one is time-based, well done. So if your vision is to become a, um, uh, to be a famous entrepreneur and a tech startup, then one of your short-term goals at university might be um, to do an internship. So you could make that into a smart goal. Um, and that would be, uh, I plan to do, uh, one month's internship at uh, a tech startup uh, in my second year of university. Now, would everyone agree that that's a SMART goal? Yeah, you can make it more specific. You could sort of, you could identify the company the, the, where you're going to do your internship of course, um, but that's, that's what you have to do when you're setting your goals. All right, let's move on to the second step. Is everyone clear with the first step? Yeah? Great. Second step, you have to audit your time. Okay, now this, this is where, this takes a bit of work and hopefully, um, hopefully at, the moment you've, at the moment you've got a bit of a lull. Hopefully you're um, a little bit between study and university or you're on swap back or there's a little bit of free time for you now to do something like this. If not, um, whenever you have time, please try to do it. It's really important. 
what you need to do is sort of download um, a time log, an Excel spreadsheet, and write down everything you do in 15 minute blocks for a couple of days. And I know it sounds really, really painful. Um, and yes, there are apps that can help you with this. Um, I've got one just highlighted on the screen here at the moment. Uh, it's uh, called Rescue Time. This will track um, all of the time that you're using your device and show you what you've actually, where you've visited and how much time you've spent in a particular area. But it won't obviously track <laughs> um, what you're, you know, when you're cooking food, when you're watching um, Netflix, when you're playing with your little sister, all those things, helping your brother with his homework, that won't be tracked. But you can, you can um, enter it manually on this app. Anyway, the idea is to do an audit and um, then you need to evaluate and categorise where your time is spent. All right. Um, and your, this time management app will actually do that for you too once you enter everything and give you percentages. Um, you need to be asking yourself, um, how are you wasting time? And um, what can you be doing better? And you need to look at your personal productive time. Okay, which, which times of the day do you work well? Okay, we all know this, don't we? You know, you're either a morning person or an evening person. Um, now for me, I have a really dead time between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Is anyone else similar? Do you have a dead time where you just really can't do anything that productive? where unless you have some coffee or a big slab of chocolate, nothing's happening. Three and five for Yara, yep. Yes, 12 to two, yeah. Yeah, and I find I'm most productive early in the morning, but until I started auditing my time, I realized that I did like really wasteful things in the morning, like I do um, the housework, because you, you sort of wake up when you're in lockdown, don't you? And the first thing you see is the dirty floor or the dishes or whatever. Um, but that's my productive time. That's when my brain's really alert and uh, I need to defend that time. So I need, need you all to think about um, those times. Uh, don't fight your natural rhythm. Um, once you know what your productive time is, um, write it down now, make a note of it and defend it. <laughs> I can't say that strongly enough, okay? You want to put some, I know it's hard being in lockdown and sharing spaces with, with family members, but you need to let them know that that is your productive time and you cannot be disturbed, okay? Uh, it, it's possibly, you know, it could be a, a two or three hour slot somewhere in the day or a one hour slot, but defend it, all right? All right, now, have you all made a note of your, of your personal productive time and your dead time? Okay, with your dead time, you don't wanna schedule anything like working on assignments, okay? That's when, you do, that's when you do your cleaning or you have some downtime with your brothers and sisters. Okay, step three, um, putting it into a plan, all right? So, um, what you've gotta start with, I guess, is um, a yearly planner, which has the significant events and time commitments. Now, I know it's a bit old fashioned to look at one of these um, wall planners, but um, if you're a visual learner uh, like myself, it's, it's nice just to fill them in old school and, and to stick them up on your wall. Uh, if you're going to university soon, they usually have them in their, in their um, office. Um, Bradley, I'm not sure if Murdoch, Murdoch has Planners like that, um, but it's, it's, it's universities usually do, and you can get a hard copy, um, which already has the university key dates in it. Um, and then you just fill it in with any other significant events and time commitments. And that could be, yeah, your, your university dates, exams, assignments, use different colors per subject, place it on the wall. Um, other significant events might be um, a travel, travel that you could be doing with your family. <laughs> I'm thinking optimistically. Um, it could be some um, significant family events like uh, wedding anniversaries, birthdays, all right? Just the key events. Um, you don't wanna overcrowd it. Uh, and of course there are, you can use your, your Google calendar or other online calendars to help you with this. But I think this A3, this, this poster size picture of your year plan is very useful for you to get a general overview of, of what's coming up for the year. Okay, so moving on from that, um, 
you also have to start looking at a weekly planner. And this is where more detail comes in. And this is where you can put in your university lecture times, your group assignment meetings, work and regular commitments. Do you go to the gym or at home? <laughs> um, do you have to attend meetings? Um, allocate time for personal emails and social media. You know, that's fine, but allocate it. And when it's done, move on to the next. Um, personal development, are you learning a language? Are you practicing the piano? Um, and eating and sleeping, all these have to go into your, into your weekly planner. And remember, as, when you're putting in your study time, when you're working out where the gaps are for your study time, use those time slots um, available really wisely, okay? Once you've filled in all your other commitments, long-term and regular, um, where do you have time and where is your productive time? Bingo, that's where you're going to study. Okay. Um, if you have long time slots, uh, like two plus hours, that's great. Um, lucky you. Um, and that's if you're at university um, or studying, that's when you do your extensive reading. You know, when you've got that assignment and you've got to read broadly um, to get an idea of the topic. Okay, that takes time. Um, when you've got to do any research assignment work, those long time slots are important. But I will also speak later about the, the um, importance of chunking those long time slots as well to make it manageable. If you've got a medium time slot in your weekly schedule, say one to two hours, that's when you can take notes and readings and do targeted reading, okay? So, you know, a read, one reading that's been assigned to you for class. Um, it's when you can revise exams, start doing the outlines for your assignments, your essays. And short time slots. Now, this would have generally been maybe your commute to university or, you know, your, your coffee break or, you know, when you're when you're on the bus or the metro going to, to uni. And this is a good time to do light stuff like review lecture notes, um, maybe draft an essay plan um, and reflective journal entries. A lot of universities ask you to do reflective work and uh, it's not difficult to do. You don't have to research, it's all coming from your experience. So that's a good time for you to maybe just get out your phone and dictate some, um, some messages to yourself. Um, or if you, I'll show you an app soon on Microsoft Office where you can just um, directly talk into Microsoft Word and, uh, and the words will appear. All right. Okay, and I just have up on the top corner of the screen um, an app that you might want to look at. I will explain it in more detail later, but there are many, many apps out there that will help you organize your weekly study schedule and help you break it down into manageable chunks. And that's one. All right, iStudious. Uh, I'll show that to you more towards the end of our, towards the end of the webinar. All right, now step four. All right, um, love the deadline. <laughs> we sort of, I don't know why we get, we get freaked out about deadlines, but that's when we do our best work and we all know it. That's when we're our most productive. All right, now look at this young man about to finish a marathon. I presume it's a marathon and you know when you're doing a race like this um, when you get to the end you have this sudden burst of energy and you don't know where it came from all right um, and that's why um, most students well maybe not most but some students I'll give you the benefit of the doubt leave their assignments to the last minute and it's why um, many employees are their most productive before they go away on vacation do you does that ring a bell with anybody Remember when you, you know, if, if you have to work, usually that last two or three days at work or that last day, you get, you're so efficient. Okay. So the idea is that we have to sort of channel this adrenaline that we have um, uh, for a deadline and use that to our advantage. All right. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay. But before I do that, we need to understand a concept called Parkinson's law. All right. Um, now, Cyril Parkinson um, spent several years in the British civil service and made a number of observations about the evolution of bureaucracies and how they swirled. Even if what they were supporting was getting smaller and smaller, the bureaucracy got bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, it became the foundation for a time management concept known as Parkinson's law. And basically it's what's written on the screen. Work expands um, to fill the time available for its completion, all right? Work expands 
so as to fill the time available for its completion. So in other words, the more time you give yourself to complete a task, the more time it will take, okay? You'll fill that extra time with procrastination, making yourself busy and searching for um, perfectionism. Right. So how can we apply this knowledge of um, how we work well when there's a deadline um, with Parkinson's law, all right? How do we find a sweet spot between a pressured deadline and some um, space, some wriggle room if things go wrong? So that leads, um, sorry, this is me continuing step four, all right? Loving the deadline. And I'm just gonna break that down a little bit more for you, okay? So how are we going to thrive under pressure and get stuff done? All right. Now, my first tip for you is put the deadlines in your diary one week before they are due. Simple, huh? <laughs> one week. All right. Give yourself that extra wriggle room. Also, break down the big tasks into small chunks. All right. Now, um, big, big, vague, non specific tasks um, can appear really overwhelming. So if you have in your week, in your yearly planner, um, write 5,000 word assignment. <laughs> You're gonna look at that every day and go, oh, I'd rather just go back to Netflix, thank you very much. Or it's just too much, it's too, too much. There's too much going on, okay? So um, if you break that down into small tasks that take 15 to 25 minutes, you just chip, chip, chip away at it, much like a person climbing a mountain. You don't, you don't climb Everest in one day. You do particular parts of the, of the climb over time until it all comes together. So I've got a little group activity. Um, I want you to just put in the chat what you think are some of the tasks involved in finishing a 1500 word research essay. Okay. It doesn't have to come in order, just try to think of like small tasks. Like the first one could be choose the question. Your, your lecturer could give you five, <laughs> five possibilities and um, you, you might have to choose one. That takes time, okay? That's your first task. That could take 10 minutes. It could take 25 minutes, okay? You might have to do some extensive reading, <laughs> but choosing that task. Okay, so Ria was put down the introduction, 200 words. Great, Ria. Okay, that's the beginning. Now, um, that's, that's a good idea, but you might want to write the introduction last, okay? Sometimes it's easier to leave it to last, okay? Sometimes it's better to sort of do your outline, yeah? Get an idea of where you want the essay to go and what resources you need to finish it. Um, and then if you, and then work on the conclusion and then finally do the introduction because then it will be very strong. Three paragraphs a day, Michelle, you are a star, but I think that's too much. Three paragraphs a day, you know, usually at university, you'll be given an assignment and you'll have, you know, four to five weeks, maybe even eight weeks to work on it, okay? Um, and they will require you to research extensively and critically and analyse and synthesise synthesize arguments. Um, yeah, again, Yara, wow, that's too much, a thousand words today. If I, if I woke up and saw that in my daily planner, I think I'd go back to bed. <laughs> I would. Okay, can we break it down into more? Let's, let's try to make it smaller. I think, Sarah, Sarah you seem to be um, on a good idea here. You've got choose tasks, do some research, planning. The planning's really important. If you do the planning right at the beginning, start your outline, then things will fall into place. But that writing the outline is a task in itself. You look at your weekly schedule, you look at your productive time, you know it's between 10 until 12. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and you write in your weekly schedule, do essay outline. Mm -hmm. Joe, 100 words a day, I'm liking it, Joe. Yep. <laughs> Great, thanks everyone for uh, contributing to that. Um, so every day you'll have a to-do list, all right? And keep it small, okay, when it comes to study. I, I think three tasks maximum is fine, okay, personally. Um, and these are the small chunked up tasks. And really apply that deadline principle. What must you get done before the end of the day? Okay, uh, and do it. Now, 
to really build up the adrenaline, <laughs> the deadline, you have to impose time restrictions. Um, now, one thing you can do is uh, focus for 15 or 20 or 25 minutes, then break. Uh, that's called the Pomodoro technique. I've got a link there for you. And um, I've also got an app uh, that I'll share later, which helps you to focus. Um, and, you know, you can just put on some music and just you just have to focus on that particular task and then break. All right. And the, the, the timer will let you know when you've completed your focus successfully. Um, impose real time limits. So, uh, you know, take your laptop somewhere where there's no power. A little bit harder lockdown at the moment, but once once we move on to once we um, you know start attending university face to face again or have a bit more free freedom in our movements, take your laptop to a cafe without the charger, okay? And you know, uh, and with battery life of only an hour or two, okay? That's your deadline. Um, sandwich study tasks between fixed commitments. All right, so you can block out family time. Uh, you might say, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to make dinner. All right. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, bath my daughter. And in between those two things, I have um, half an hour. And in that half an hour, I'm going to get that essay outline done. Okay, but you, I've sandwiched it between two fixed commitments, so I have to get it done. The other thing is to let people know in your family, um, you know, about your, um, about what you've put restrictions on, um, and to and to really schedule. If you if you're living with a family, you know, do that. Say, oh, okay, Sunday is family time, or half a day Sunday is family time, but not not Friday morning. All right. Anyway, so just some ideas there. Um, did I show you? Yeah. Okay, step five is to um, silence the uh, distractions. All right. Now, um, distractions are everywhere. Um, and the first thing you have to do is identify them. So are they your flatmates? Are they your family members? <laughs> is it Netflix, uh, gaming, social media? Okay. Actively identify them and fight them. All right. Uh, set firm goals and specific times. Um, start with short times, as I mentioned before, use the Pomodoro technique. Um, and uh, there's a little app called Focus that can really help you with that. I'll explain that later. Um, isolate yourself. <laughs> We're all old hands at that now. Listen to music, it does help. Uh, turn off your phone and your Wi-Fi, right? And reward yourself when you get it done. Very important. Now, they're sort of, I mean, I've talked about um, visible distractions there, flatmates, Netflix, your phone, but there's also our internal distractions, the voice inside us that, um, that can steer us away from study um, or other pressing tasks. So one's anxiety. Um, and this is, this is um, a common feeling for, for everyone. Um, and it's when you feel so overwhelmed that you actually freeze and you don't get anything done. Has anyone been there? Does anyone just, I know I've frozen a couple of times with my current PhD. Yeah. Okay, so the solution for that is just get started and set priorities. Okay, just starting something will reduce your anxiety. Procrastinating, putting off a task because it's overwhelming, break it into small chunks, we've talked about that. And perfectionism. Um, putting off a task because you won't be able to produce a perfect result. The solution for that is just aim to get it finished. Don't aim for a masterpiece, produce something and pass because your lecturer is not going to see what you don't get done. Okay, so you may have all these grand ideas, but at the end of the day, it's what you submit. Okay, it's better to put something in than nothing at all. Okay, I just wanted to highlight some research um, from the University of Texas around um, smartphone use. Um, now, this, this was done in about 2017, this research. Uh, so there's probably more current research out there now. But uh, this was done, um, there are a number of professors involved in this and the title of their research paper was Brain Drain, 
the mere presence of one's own smartphone reduces available cognitive capacity. So um, the research that they did, it's quite interesting. They took um, 800 students uh, who were all smartphone users and um, they gave them a task, a series of tasks to do um, where they had to sit at the computer and the tasks really tested their um, cognitive capacity, like how much room did they have left in their brain to, um, to hold data and process data. And some of the participants, um, uh, now all the phones were on silent. Some of the participants were made to leave their phones outside the room. Others were made to put them in the bag and others were allowed to put them on the desk. Um, and they could have them face up or actually, no, they were told to put them face down on the desk. And what the data showed is that the ones who had their phones outside of the classroom performed significantly better. Okay. Than those that had it, had the, had the phone in their bag or on the desk. Okay. And there was a, a bit of a variation between the bag and the desk, but not much. So the idea is that just, knowing that it's within reach can affect your cognitive capacities is a really important thing to understand. So turn, not only turning off your phone, but putting it somewhere where you, you cannot see it will help you be more productive. All right. Okay. So there's a summary of the five key steps um, that, I've, that I've presented so far this morning. And I'd like to share a little video which summarises those steps, not, um, not really in the order that I've given them, because this is my own personal take on time management, but it's still, nonetheless, it's a, it's a very good video. And all those five points do come into it, um, just perhaps not exactly the way that I've said them. Do you wish you could study more effectively? In this video, we're going to... Hi, Mum. Yes, just uh, filming a video. Um, yeah, can I call you in an hour? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Bye. Where were we? Yes, studying effectively. Uh, dealing with the distractions is just one thing we need to do. <clears throat> yes. If you want to study well, you need to manage your time. How to do that? First, you need to ask yourself three questions. What your commitments are, what your study goals are, and how you work best. Let's start with the easy one. What are your commitments outside study? What about work? Family events? Childcare? or travel. Write down when these are and how long they take. You can do this for the whole year or a shorter period. Now you know how much time is left for studying, but is it enough? That depends on your goals, which is point two. Do you want to pass the course or get a specific grade? How much will you need to do in order to achieve that? Take a good look at the syllabus, exam and assignment timetables and old exam papers to find out how much you need to do. Sometimes you need to look at short term goals, for example, this week, today and in the next hour. Take a good look at your commitments. You might need to change some if you don't have enough time. Which brings us to question three. How do you work best? In the morning? At night? And where? In a library? At home? With music? In silence? With lots of coffee? Or lots of chocolate? Psst. Try to do your most difficult tasks when your concentration is strongest. Ah, with all this information, you can make the perfect master plan that suits you. But there's a problem. Distractions. Sorry, Mum. Maybe time to switch off your phone. 
And the difficult one, procrastination. Why is it that whenever you have a task, everything else appears more interesting? Maybe you need to take a desperate measure. Switch off your internet connection. Ah, and if you need the internet for research, you can load pages you need before turning it off. And if you still find it hard, try working in short bursts. For example, 40 minutes at a time. You can also do a deal with yourself. How about, I can eat this lovely chocolate, but only after I finish reading this paper. Ah, hopefully by now, everything's going great. Now remember, even if you make the best plan in the universe, you still need to be flexible and try to enjoy your study. Hi, Mum. Yeah, just finished filming now, actually. Oh, hang on. Uh, let me switch off the camera. Okay, um, so I thought that was a nice summary of um, where, of covering a, a nice summary of where we've been so far on the webinar. Um, I just put in the group chat that I don't, he, he does mention sort of doing things in 40 minute bursts. I think if you're, if you're new to just focusing on one task and really chunking your tasks into small manageable units, do a shorter time, try 15 minutes or 20 minutes. All right. Now, the next part of the webinar um, is going to take, say, I'd, I'd say about 10 minutes maximum. Um, and I'm just going to go through some apps that have either been recommended to me or I've used in the past or have received really good reviews on some websites that I trust. Um, as I'm going through these, um, if you have any tips or apps that you're currently using, could you please share them with the group? Um, and then, um, Bradley, I think we'll be able to save this chat, won't we? And uh, and let the participants know. Um, or you can. Yeah, you that's can... right. Yeah. Great. All right. So um, the first thing, <laughs> this might sound really obvious, but my top three have actually well, they're not in any really, they're not in an order of importance. But my first three were Microsoft Office 365 tools. Now I've got them just on the side there. And there are even more than that. Um, now, are you all using Office 365 on a daily basis? Just pop in yes or no into the chat, please. So if I've got that correctly, it looks like three of us, three are using yes and three are not. Is that right? Yeah, yes, yes. So 50-50. All right, so if you're not already using it and especially if you've got a little bit of time spare now, start playing around with it because um, it's very useful for your university. But more importantly, I think um, as a graduate, uh, when you enter the workforce, you will be using it. Okay, it's a very transferable uh, skill. Um, so I've got some links there to um, to introductory videos. Uh, OneDrive is where you can store your files, transfer files, share with people. That's excellent. Um, Teams is a great way to collaborate on work um, at university um, and projects at work and at university and um, I'm also going to have but I'm going to spend a little bit of time on word today I know that sounds strange because we, we all use word right but do you really know what um, it's capable of all right I'm still learning uh, so I'm just going to stop sharing this screen and go into my browser All right, and I'm just going 
to go up to my work email. Can everyone see that? I've lost my chat now, of course. Just bear with me while I... That's fine, Rebecca. Yeah, that's viewable on the screen. All right, thanks, Bradley. Um, now, when you go into your, into your email account, if you have access to um, Outlook and Office 365, um, you'll be able to go across to Word and open up a new document. All right. Now, I want to draw your attention to this function here, um, which is dictate. Can everyone see that? Now, if you click on dictate, uh, I'll just, just check the share. Yeah. Great. So if you go to dictate, um, you can choose the language that you like speaking in. Now, I'm probably more of an English UK person than English US, so I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to um, just start, I've, my teacher has asked me to write a reflective journal and um, I really can't be bothered typing at the moment. I'm not a great typist. So I'm just going to start recording my thoughts about a presentation I did. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Our teacher has asked us to prepare a reflection on um, the group presentation we did last week. Overall, I was, I was quite happy with the timing of our, of our presentation and the audience response. But the main difficulty was um, working with some of my team members. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so for some of you that might be easier than typing. Now, <clears throat> you're all, um, I'm sure, very fluent English speakers, but sometimes you might just want to speak your own language to really, you know, get the idea down. So you could also try, let's just see what languages I've got there. Uh, I don't speak French. Okay, Japanese, this will be fun. <laughs> Konnichiwa, ohayou gozaimasu, o genki desu ka? Does that work? Oh, we're getting something. Oh, I'll just do that again. Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Just play around with it. Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Konnichiwa, o genki desu ka? Anyway, it's, there's a bit of a lag there, all right? So then you could sort of highlight that and you could go into, just by highlighting it actually and right clicking, you can look at translate. And it says that I, okay, it's picked it up as Japanese, that's good. And I might want to see what that says in English. <laughs> which is probably not what I said, but I think it's because it's separated it. So that was, that was a great fail, but I'll see if I can do that again for you. All right. It does work. I did, I did it last night. Now, okay. So what's awesome about this is that um, you can actually input, um, you can, if there's a YouTube video or a podcast or something in your mother tongue, and you'd really like to um, get some of those ideas for your research assignment, you could you could play it, and it can the transcript will will um, appear on Word on your Word document, and then you can um, play around with it and find your own voice and use your own words, um, translate it into English, um, play around with it a bit, paraphrase and add it to your assignment, all right? Uh, another cool feature is um, uh, even just reading texts. So for example, um, earlier, oh, sorry. Uh, 
earlier, I introduced you to uh, this article, I think, The Brain Drain. I didn't show you the article, but we talked about uh, the, uh, the impact that just having your phone nearby can have on your brain's capacity to process information. So uh, you might have to do a lot of research for an assignment and you may be finding it hard to keep up with all the academic texts. Um, it's, some of the language can be quite abstract in academic readings. So, you know, you could copy it and uh, go back to your Word document. And pop it in. Okay, so I've just, it's, can everyone see that? It says Word document 16, can everyone see that? Yeah. Right. All right. So um, that's a, a, a chunk from a, from an academic reading that my teacher has assigned me. And um, if I wanted to just, I could, if I'm not a big reader, but I'm a good listener, for example, you might want to um, open up immersive reader, uh, immersive reader. Okay. Make a note of this. This is a really cool tip. And it will play the text for you. Okay, it'll read it aloud, right? Resources, thereby leaving fewer resources available for other tasks and undercutting cognitive performance. Okay. So you could, you know, have that playing and listen to it on your phone, I guess. You can choose female or male. You can slow it down if that speed is too fast or you can make it quicker, all right? Um, up here... Grammar options. Now, if you're submitting your writing to your teacher and your teacher often says, oh, please control your tense and your aspect, um, for example, uh, you might want to just get a, an idea of, you know, what, what are the verbs? <laughs> okay. So you could put your writing in, all right, and you could use this function and just get, just highlight all the verbs, okay, and make sure that you have done the right thing with your verbs in your writing or your adjectives or your adverbs or whatever, whatever you need to concentrate on. All right, is that helpful? I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't understand my Japanese, but that's all right. Now, the other thing you can do is, uh, let me just make that a bit smaller. Okay, that's the text we're using. Um, the other thing is you could have it, this is crazy, it's a wonderful, but you could actually have this um, read aloud to you in your own language, <laughs> all right? So you would choose it, um, reading preferences. Uh, now you might want it in Arabic. Um, I'm just seeing who have we got. We've got some Arabic speakers maybe in the group. Uh, G1, are you from Korea? Anyway, let's just see. You can tell me how good this translation is anyway. So I don't want it by word, I want it by document. Right? And let me see. So it's already put it into Arabic. تمكن هواتفنا ذكية من الاتصال المستمر بالمعلومات والترفيه وبعضها البعض وتشجعه. All right, you get the idea. So there are a few of the things that you can do on Microsoft Word that you may not have known about before. Now, I, I'm conscious that I am getting close to running out of time, Bradley. Do you mind if I take them through a few quick apps? Um, no, go ahead. Yeah, please. It's very useful. So, uh, yeah, take as, as long as you need. That's fine. All right, so um, I mentioned, as I was going through the webinar today, I mentioned a few other apps, and I'll just show them to you quickly. Um, apologies in advance, I haven't really, um, some of them I haven't really checked to see if they're free. Most of them are, but sometimes Apple may charge a little bit and um, Android won't, um, or vice versa. Um, so if you find something you like here, experiment with it, and uh, uh, there's a lot of trial periods usually with these apps. So. Um, just find something that works for you. So the first one is really, really lovely. Okay, it's, um, it's called Forest. And, uh, okay, hopefully everyone can see that. I'll just, all right, Forest. Now, this is sort of a gamified um, 
Pomodoro timer, which helps you focus. Like you set a time, 15, 20 minutes. And um, if you pick up your phone, and you know, um, it will uh, stop recording that you've been successful with that task. Now, if you do, if you do stay focused for the time prescribed, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then um, you get a tree. And when you create, I think when you have five trees in your bank, this company actually plants a tree for you, which is, um, which is a wonderful idea. All right. So there's, there's actually a few things that the, the app will help you with, but that's the main one. So each successful focus block that you achieve will add a tree to your virtual forest. All right. Has anyone used that? That's how many trees have planted. Lovely. All right. Another one I want to show you is um, reading trainer. Now at university, you will be reading a lot and um, all of us, whether you're a native expert speaker or um, a fairly proficient um, uh, English user, um, we can all improve our reading. All right. And this, this has won lots of awards, this application, um, and it helps you with speed reading um, amongst other things. All right. So that's a handy little app to have to um, boost your productivity when it comes to reading. All right, you may have others that you like too. The next app that I'm showing you is called Rescue Time. I did mention it in the webinar earlier. This helps you um, audit your time and work out what you're doing. Uh, it shows you, it gives you a breakdown of where you're spending your time. All right, it blocks websites that are providing you, which are distracting you, all right? Um, it helps you schedule, so it, it does a lot, this app, all right? And you get in-depth reports on what you got done during the day and, uh, and where you were in terms of a social media sense, all right? So that's a lovely app too. Um, now, in no particular order, Grammarly. Uh, is anyone using Grammarly? <laughs> awesome, great, great. So are you using the premium version? Aha, well, Sane and Sunia, wait till you try the premium version. And as, um, as university students or high school students, your education um, institution should have, give you access to it. Because basically, as long as there's an um, Office 365 EDU account, then you have access to the premium um, uh, Grammarly. So you do have to go, when you do go into Grammarly, you have to look at the EDU uh, section and sign up with your university's address. Um, my students at Murdoch absolutely love it um, because they can use it across a lot of different platforms. All right. So, so try that. All right. Um, another app. Uh, this has been around for a while. It used to be called Wonder List. Uh, some of you may have used it when it was Wonder List. Um, like all good things, it was bought out. <laughs> and it's now the Todoist. Um, this is a really good app for um, putting everything down that you have to do. So it's not just focused on your study. I'll show you one focused completely on your study soon. This is all the things like get bread, um, don't forget mum's birthday, uh, you know, call so and so. All right. Uh, very highly regarded and reviewed online. All right. I don't have time to go through and I'll show you all these, unfortunately, but please, um, I hope you do take some time later on in the week to, to play with them. I use the word play because, I mean, I think that's what you have to do. You have to, it's not going to break, is it? Just go in and experiment. Um, two more. Uh, this one is really just focused on uh, student life. Has anyone used this? Because it's very popular. It's called iStudios. All right. Now, the last time I looked, I think it was, uh, it was free in, um, on iOS, but there was a charge on Android for the Pro. Um, but anyway, check that out. Uh, this is a uh, great for record, putting in all your assignments, deadlines, group work, and chunking all your tasks, all right, and keeping and syncing it all. Um, 
I'll just see if I can. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you go in and, and, um, and look at that because there's so much to this app and I wouldn't do it justice right now. All right, but this is your one for scheduling all of your study um, tasks. And the last one I want to show you, <laughs> now you might think this is a bit strange, but it's your password saver. Please, 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 I hope you have one of these. Um, I have lost count of the number of times I've been in a class with my university students and they've forgotten their login details for a particular website that we're using, or even just their student ID uh, login. Um, don't, you can waste hours trying to remember passwords. So if you don't already have a password app where you can um, put all your passwords and reminders securely, uh, where it's all encrypted, get it. This is one of the older ones. Um, I used to use this a lot when I was on Android and I found it really easy to use. Um, I have moved to Splash ID, but I think I, I think I actually prefer this one. Anyway, there's a lot out there. Uh, this has been time, this has been tested over time and works well. Do, do you all have a password protected um, app on your Do you all have an app to store your passwords at the moment? Okay, <laughs> trust me, it's a lifesaver. All right, now that's um, all I had to show you on the, on the app. Sorry for going through it so quickly. And, um, and that's pretty much all I have in terms of the webinar. Um, now on the, Bradley, I guess that everyone can have a copy of this. Do they get access to this later or do we put it on SlideShare? Whatever yeah, we do. The we'll share that, we'll share the slides and the recording of the presentation as well. So you can easily refer back to this later on, no, no problem. Great, so they're the links to the apps that I just showed you anyway. Um, and uh, does anyone have any questions? before I hand over to Bradley, just to wrap up the session. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't. Does anyone have any questions? Would anyone like to share with the group a particular app that they're using that has really saved them time? Google, I think there's something Google. Sorry, go ahead, Bradley. No, I was just, you've, you've got the question there. I was just going to say we've had a question about using Google Docs. Doc. Yeah, Google Docs is amazing. Use it. Great idea. Great idea. All right. Um, but diversify what you use so that you're not, that you don't get stuck later on. Like in, when you have that new internship position, <laughs> for example, and everyone's using Teams and um, OneDrive. All right. It's just good to be a bit... Uh, ambidextrous, I guess, in, in the platforms that you use. All right. Um, great. So I'm going to hand over to Bradley to, um, to finish off the webinar. But thank you just for me. Thank you so much for coming uh, today and um, sharing your ideas and, uh, and how lockdown has been for you. Um, and uh, love to see you again. We're putting on a webinar every, I think, every couple of weeks. Anyway, Brad might have more information on that. But it was lovely meeting you all. Take care and handing over to Brad. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, I'm sure everyone uh, that's attending today would like to extend a big, big thank you to you as well, Rebecca. It's a very useful uh, webinar. I know for one that I've actually learned a lot today as well. Um, you know, I think specifically around, uh, you know, silencing those distractions and the dictation on the, the Microsoft Word. These are things that I, I didn't you know, know too much around. Um, and I think, yeah, for many of the students that are in the position now, I know a lot of them are making that transition from, from high school to university. Uh, I know those that, that mentioned in the chat earlier, a lot, a lot of those are doing IB and GCSEs, A-levels today. So um, very, very useful. Um, I wish I'd had this tool when I left high school and went to university. I think a lot of you that have joined today, you'll, you'll find that when you reach university, there is more of an emphasis on the, the kind of independent learning and, and kind of research and that type of thing. So these time management skills are going to be uh, invaluable, I think, um, moving forward. So hopefully you have enjoyed today's session. Um, uh, as Rebecca alluded to, we will be uh, running some similar useful tools and, and, and resources for you moving forward. So this time next week, uh, we'll be running a session on uh, critical thinking and research 
uh, techniques, which again, yeah, uh, as someone that went from that, that high school to university uh, stage, it's a very important tool for you to be able to adapt and, and use as well. So uh, we'll be sending out the link to everyone afterwards, along with the presentation uh, from today's sessions so that you have that. Uh, so it'd be great uh, if anyone would like to join us next week uh, for that session as well. We'll be uh, delighted to, to welcome you. Um, just to kind of finish off the session today, um, I just wanted to, to give everyone a very quick overview of the, the kind of current situation at Murdoch University Dubai. I know a lot of you are, are making those all important decisions about your future and uh, what your next steps are going to be uh, regarding your higher education journey. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed today's session, but I want to give you a bit of, you know, just a very quick five minute background of Murdoch and, and potentially, you know, this could be an option for you in, in terms of your future studies. Uh, I know that you have a lot uh, of questions and, and, uh, and I'm sure you have a lot of ideas about where you might want to go. So hopefully this will kind of help you through that, that kind of process uh, as well. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen just for a few very quick final slides here. Um, and I'm sure I guess that the big question for a lot of you is, is around the uncertainty of what is happening at the moment, of course, with the, the COVID-19 pandemic and, and how that is going to impact you in terms of your, your future decisions and where you might be able to go. So I just wanted to, to provide a useful website link really in the first instance so that you can keep up to date with, with what is happening, certainly at our university here in, in, in Murdoch, uh, in, in Dubai. Um, for those that are joining us from Dubai today, you'll, you'll be you know, well aware that, that schools and universities have been closed for quite some time now. Um, and, and actually at Murdoch, we had to, to shut our campus, unfortunately, back on the, the 8th of March. But what that does mean is that we've had lots of time to make that, that transition to the online teaching, which I'm sure many of you are, are experiencing with your schools right now. And what you've experienced today with Rebecca is almost a bit of a taste of what it would be like as a, a kind of student with us at the moment. So uh, logging in online, but hopefully, you know, we haven't lost that, that degree of engagement and the interactive nature. You are still able to, to kind of, you know, communicate with your peers and your, your teachers uh, in, in the same way, or at least as, as best as possible, given the, the current situation. Um, of course, we don't know what is going to happen moving forward. Uh, I know that some of you mentioned in, in the call that you are in the final year of high school and that you're looking to, to join university later this year. Um, we will just have to adapt and, and wait and see. But if the situation remains that the online teaching needs to continue, uh, we are very well placed to, to kind of provide that for you uh, as a student. Uh, but of course, the hope is that, that borders will reopen and, and that we will be able to, to open our campus as well and welcome you back uh, face to face. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we keep you updated is the key message. And, and uh, the, the website link I've provided there will be the, the best kind of location to get that, that information. Um, and I'm sure many of you have aspirations to, to, um, to study overseas. I know uh, popular destinations like the UK and and the United States and Canada, Australia, these will all be on, on your radar. Um, but of course, with the current situation, that, that might be uh, difficult at this stage. So with, with Murdoch University, what you receive here in Dubai is a uh, fully uh, accredited and authentic Australian degree. So just want to, to kind of make you aware of that. If you, know, you were hoping to, to travel and, and go to a different country for your studies, Hopefully that will still be available to you in the future. But the message is, you know, you don't have to delay right now. You don't have to wait necessarily uh, to start your higher education and to start your degree. Um, you could begin your journey with us, especially if you are here in the United Arab Emirates joining us today. Uh, start your recognized qualification, uh, such as Murdoch. Uh, and then if you want to transfer later on, that could be an option for you. You know, if you want to go to, to our main campus, for example, in Australia, or if you want to go to the UK, what you'll have started with us would be a recognised degree. And, and of course, the hope, you know, you know, you might want to, to stay with us, you'll, you'll get some great relationships with our, our academics and your fellow students on the course. Um, but the, yeah, the key message is you don't have to, to delay right now. Um, and, and you can start that journey, even, you know, if that is online. Um, as you've seen kind of with the, the software that we're able to use uh, today. And um, I'm sure you all have very different interests in terms of where you want to go. Different universities will be offering different opportunities to you. These are the programs that we offer 
at Murdoch University. So anyone that potentially is interested in one of these subject areas, uh, do reach out to us, get in touch, and we'll be very happy to provide, provide you with further information about entry requirements and potential scholarships and so on uh, that you might be uh, eligible uh, for in these different areas. And really the final announcement is just um, about our campus. Um, we were very excited to be moving to a brand new campus here in Dubai. We were meant to be opening our doors uh, for our next intake, which is uh, literally just a couple of weeks away. So at the beginning of May, the anticipation was that we could start face-to-face -face teaching at our brand new state-of-the-art campus. But uh, of course that has now been pushed back. So we're hoping that we will be able to open our doors in September, which for many of you in your final year of high school will be the, the time that you're looking to start university. Uh, so fingers crossed, we can, we can bring you to, to our yeah, beautiful campus, modern. For those familiar with the, the layout of Dubai, we're, we're moving to Knowledge Park, so a much more uh, hopefully central and easily accessible location uh, for you as a student. And uh, yeah, just a few images here of, of what you can expect um, potentially if you are going to, to come and join us uh, face to face at our, at our campus. Um, but really, yeah, that's that's it. I, I'm conscious of time. Um, you've been on for, for over an hour and 10 minutes now. Um, and I'm sure um, the concentration levels, um, as we've kind of heard in, in the session today, will dip at certain points. We've just entered that 12 till 2 uh, window now, which I know for some of you is the, the dead time. So uh, I won't keep you any longer um, than needs be. Do make a note of the, the contact information on the screen there. So if you want to get in touch and ask any questions, uh, either you know about what you've listened to today or potentially studying at Murdoch University in the future, don't hesitate to get in touch and yeah, we'll be very happy to, to help you out and answer any questions that you might have. Um, I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna see if we've had any final questions coming through, um, but I think we must have covered everything in so much detail, Rebecca, that, that we've answered any kind of questions that, that students might have there. So again, yeah, it's just a case of thanking you for coming along. We will send a, a copy of the slides out to you afterwards so you can refer back to that and we'll be in touch about our next session next week uh, that will be taking place on critical thinking and research. So yeah, thanks Aziz, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Oh, just one question I can see there. For the next session, will we have to sign up again? Yeah, so there's a separate uh, registration link, uh, but we'll be sending that to everyone that's attended the webinar today. So you'll get an email through from us with a registration link in order to sign up for that. And that'll be taking place at the, the same time uh, next week with myself and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I'm great. Thank you. Thank you.